Good morning YouTube. My name is Paul. You're watching 251 Reeling and today we're going to be installing the Garmin Live Scope. Now in case you've been living under a rock for like the past five years, you know that Garmin Live Scope has the technology for you to see fish in real time action. I mean it is awesome. And if you hadn't got one of these yet, I know it's a little pricey, but if you're tournament fishing, or you're gonna be an avid fisherman, you just about gotta have one of these to compete with other anglers because it's everywhere now. Everybody's got it. And if you don't have it, you're behind the power curve. So without further ado, I'm gonna go through this procedure as quickly as I can, but doing it the right way, I hope we all learn something today. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, so we're going to start off this morning with the power wire, and we're going to be going about uh, 15 feet, so we're going to use 10 gauge wire, and if you exceed that amount, like it says 8 gauge wire here for 23 feet, 6, six gauge wire for 36 feet, and this is the number one issue people have. They go up there and they try to match the wire with the diameter of the transducer cable. Uh, not the transducer cable, but the power wire that comes with the unit. And when you do that, uh, you're gonna buy some really thin wire and it's gonna get really hot from carrying all the current and probably melt it. Uh, the panoptic system does use a lot of current. Uh, so you gotta read your instructions and make sure you do it the right way. Now what I'm gonna do, I bought this uh, cable snake off of Amazon, and I'm gonna go over there and run my wires from the back of the boat to the front of the boat. All right guys, so what I have here is some ring terminals for my power supply, and I'm just gonna splice these onto my my power wires and then I'm going to heat shrink them down and then I'm going to connect them to my battery. So we're going to go with the 10 gauge, put on my 10 gauge uh, mark here with my splicers. I'm just going to trim it up nice and clean. Do the same thing to the positive lead. Nice and clean. And then I'm just gonna slide these babies on here like this. You don't want it too long because they only give you this much ring terminal to connect with the wire. So I'm gonna uh, choose the appropriate size, 10 gauge. And I'm just gonna clamp it. Feels like I missed it. You'll feel it. There we go. Now that's my check it with my hands and pull it. That's tight. And then I'm gonna take my lighter. Uh, I recommend a little butane torch, but a lighter will work just as good. All right, so I just clamped my terminal on to my negative wire for my power. And I'm just gonna heat it up just like I did the positive cable. I'm gonna rotate it as I heat it up. Guys, you can buy these heat shrinks at any Walmart, any auto parts store, Lowe's, Home Depot, Amazon. These things are great. They always, always feel a lot better with my electronics when I have everything heat shrunk. All right, so you don't want to hit it too long. You know, a little butane lighter is probably better. A little torch is better, but you can do it with a lighter. You just got to be careful not to burn it or, you know, heat it up to the point where it melts through. But that looks really good. And, uh, Got both my terminals done. I'm gonna hook them up to my battery and start snaking it through. 
And what's really cool about this electronic snake is that it has these little cable ends on it that you just loop around. You put your wire in one end of it and then it's got this little, little plastic piece you slide down over your wire. So when you're pulling it through, all those other wires and things, it just goes right on through. Uh, and the way this thing is built, it's, it's stiff, but yet it's flexible. So it just snakes, snakes around your corners and all up through your boat, man. It's very cool. I suggest you get one of these if you're gonna run wiring through your boat or anything else. Uh, it's just a wiring snake. I ordered off amazon.com. So, good thing to have. All right, guys, so we got our power wire coming from the back of the boat. Our positive and negative here. You know, positive in my hand, I just splice them together. I'm gonna make sure it's crimped tight. All right, it does have a seven and a half amp fuse here. And we're just gonna heat it up. So satisfying to watch that heat shrink. Just draw up around that wire. And just makes a nice waterproof coating around it. Nice. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, do the same thing to the negative wire here. Gonna push it in there. Crimp with the eight on this side because that's what the factory had, but we can't make that length of run with eight gauge, so I put 10 gauge here to carry the current, just like the box said to do. And we're just gonna crank it tight. Pull it, make sure it don't come out, and then heat it up. Shrink it all around. Wow, that's awesome. It makes you feel good too to know that your cables are Excuse me, your wiring, your connections are waterproof and, and shrink wrapped. It does cost a little bit more to get the, the shrink wrap, but I mean, it's, I feel a lot confident with that than I would just old regular splices. All right, so starting to drizzle a little bit, but I guess the hard part's over, getting our power wire ran up to the front of the boat. So I'm gonna mount the, the uh, GLS-10 box right up here underneath my deck mount. And uh, everything's pretty self-explanatory. It's got a power wire, network wire, and transducer uh, wire, so should be pretty simple and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and connect these and I'll fill you guys in when I get done all right guys so there's one thing I always suggest as you check your power wire before you hook anything to it to make sure you're getting the correct voltage so that's what I'm gonna do right now if I can hold it there. Yeah, we're getting 13 volts. So that's exactly what we need to put in our transducer. All right, so when you connect your power wire and transducer wires, you know, any kind of network wires, always make sure you match the slot up to the direction it goes because if you bend one of these pins, you could really mess up that transducer. And there's really, there's no way to connect, reconnect the cable uh, if you ruin the end of it. So just keep that in mind. All right, guys, I want to mention one thing here. Uh, you look on the back of the GLS 10 box, you'll see a little uh, grounding screw and a little place to clamp a wire in. Uh, this is for if you have feedback or interference uh, from your trolling motor 
or from I don't know where else the interference could be coming from but uh, you can ground this to your negative terminal or some type of other ground you have to finding the ground can kind of be tricky sometimes but uh, you just got to find out where the interference is coming from and where you need to ground to All right guys, so we got our power wire in, our network cable in, and our transducer wire in coming from our transducer. Uh, now on the network wire from the GLS 10 box, the end of it, it's gonna go into what they have the, they call this the RJ45 connector. So let's go ahead and take these ties off. And what you got to do is connect the RJ45 cable and your network cable, your NEMA cable, together. Just like that. And then this end is going to go into your transducer panoptics slot on your Garmin unit. So that's it that's as far as the connections go that's it and this uh nema cable here uh you can connect to other garmin units on your nema backbone we're just going to cover that up because i'm not connecting anything right now but uh that's pretty much it guys we run our power up here we got our network cable in to rj45 cable go into the pan optics here and transducer wire from the transducer to the box here and that's it the transducer does come with a barrel mount mount at the bottom of your trolling motor and it also comes with a shaft mount which you can mount it up here on your shaft okay users with the uh Minn Kota tarova and the like the motor guide xi5 the shaft slides in and out of the housing here you can't use those shaft mounts because you, of course you when you stow it you got to push it all the way up to lock it but it does have the the mount here and it comes with your straps to uh, tighten it down onto the trolling motor but right now this is in forward view and it does uh, twist so you can get down view see right there that's down view and forward view so and you can uh, you can adjust this on each side of your trolling motor uh, it comes with directions on how to do that and it shows you exactly what to do so that's pretty much it guys I mean the only thing left to do now is uh, get it out on the water and go through the settings on it and set it up all right guys so on your transducer wire you, you can't really leave it straight like this on, on my trolling motor because it's an XI-5. It slides in and out of this housing right here, so you can't really mount anything to the shaft besides the lock. So what I'm gonna do is take this air hose and I'm gonna tape this whole thing to this wire. I'm gonna coil it. Uh, you can split you can split this tubing and wrap it around but it's so thick that you'd have to have a bigger coil so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna tape it around and you don't need the whole thing but I'm just gonna keep taping it around the hose like this because when you hit spot lock on this it turns like almost 360 and it'll it'll grab them wires and turn it so you got to have something kind of cold in there so that it doesn't tear your transducer cable out. All right, guys, excuse my mess here, but let's go ahead and see if it's giving us the option for pan optics because it wasn't before. And it's, it's always good just to turn it on and check and see what's going on. I do have the Echomat UHD 93. It's a nine inch. 
Um, I think I paid about $1,100 for it, but you can get them on sale around Christmas time for about $800. Uh, it does have the Lakeview G3 detail map with the contour lines, which is nice. And it's telling me right now that my transducer is in forward mode. So let's go out of the, the down scan here. Go back. Menu. Back. Uh, pan optics. All right, there it is. Wow, um, it's got the grid lines on it already. So all that's left to do now is go out on the water and set everything up, guys. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful to a lot of people. Uh, this was my first time going through this uh, panoptic setup and directions are very simple. It shows you everything to do. Uh, it's not very hard. You just got to pay attention to the wire that you use. You got to pay attention to the pins on your connectors. Make sure you don't bend any of those. Uh, the only other thing that I thought that, that might have gave some people a hiccup was the, uh, the little uh, RJ45 connector or whatever it was that connected to the uh, NEMA cable. Yeah, the NEMA cable does not exactly connect from the box to your screen you got to have that little cable but it comes in the box you just got to make sure that you connect it so that you can uh communicate between the box and your unit but that's it guys my name is paul i hope you enjoyed that i hope it was helpful to somebody please like subscribe turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified for the next episode don't be a stranger guys i got lots of content on this channel uh inshore saltwater fishing and bass fishing We've got a lot of how-to stuff so check me out guys i hope everyone has a good day adios